It's very good to be here by video phone. It's really good we got the technology working. First thing I want to talk about is um, autism is extremely variable. Uh, there are some famous scientists that were probably autistic, like Einstein. He had no language until age three. And then at the uh, more severe end of the spectrum, you'll have somebody who never can learn to dress themselves. <coughs> so autism is very variable. Now, when the children are very young, when I was two years old, I had no speech. I looked very severe. This is why it's so important to do early education with these children, because some of them, you can kind of pull them out of it. Others uh, will not learn to speak, but they might be able to learn how to type on a computer. Uh, the instant, the minute you see a child with abnormal behavior, not talking, many, many tantrums and crying, you need to start working with that child. Do not wait. And you need to have a good teacher work with that child to teach language. My speech teacher, when she talked to me, would slow down. Like for example, let's take the word cup, you know, a cup that you drink from. She'd hold up a cup and she'd say cup. And then she'd say cup, pa where she'd carefully and slowly enunciate the sounds of the words. She'd say it the regular way, and then she would say it quickly, and then she'd get me to say it. So let's start with uh, teaching names of favorite foods, names of clothing, uh, names of different toys. And it's also really important to teach these children how to interact at a game simple little turn-taking games. So the child learns how to wait and take his turn. And what I have observed is that some teachers are really good at working with these little kids. They just have the ability to work with them. And then some other, other ones, uh, they're not so good at working with them. Now, another problem that you have in autism is sensory oversensitivity. You take the child into a noisy, crowded market where there's a lot of noise, and the child starts screaming and yelling, he may be into sensory overload. And sensory problems can be extremely variable. One child will have a problem with noise sensitivity. Another child will have a problem with um, touch sensitivity, won't like scratchy clothes. Uh, it's very variable. Another child might have visual uh, sensitivity problems. And then there'll be some kids that might be attracted to rapid movement, such as watching fans go around. It's variable. So if you have a child that's afraid of loud sounds, let's say a horn honking, one of the ways to help the child get over this is let the child beep the horn. Or if it's a, uh, something like a vacuum cleaner or a hair dryer that's very noisy, let the child turn it on and off. Let the child control it. And sometimes that can help desensitize the child to the thing that is um, really bothering them. Another thing you need to be doing with a lot of these children, once they start to learn a few words, is always give the child an opportunity to use his words. You know he wants his favorite food? Say, you use your words for their favorite food. And uh, give the child time to respond. Let's say you know the child wants the rice, but then you say, use your words. And you might have to wait 10 seconds. It's a long time for him to use his words. So the early education is really, really important. Um, and uh, here are some simple things that you can try. There are some individuals that when they go to read, they'll see the print jiggle on the paper. They'll just see the print jiggle. And sometimes printing the book on some pale colored paper, like maybe light blue or light gray, or light tan paper uh, can sometimes be helpful for kids with visual problems. It's very, very variable. I have a lot more videos online. I've also got a lot of books on amazon.com that you can easily get in electronic books. Be easy for you to get them. I have a book called The Way I See It you might find helpful. Now, when I got older, I had a lot of problems with anxiety, horrible anxiety. And I discussed that in my book, Thinking in Pictures. And one of the things that helped me was antidepressant medication. And that's described in the book, a low dose of antidepressant medication. 
Maybe a drug such as Prozac, but a very low dose. Because you give too high a dose, you get agitation and insomnia. Another thing that I talk about in many, many of my talks is different ways that kids think. Some autistic kids are good at art. And if they're good at art, their ability in art needs to be encouraged. That will often show up around eight, seven years old. Encourage their art. Encourage them to do lots of different things. Also, you've got to stretch these kids. You've got to get these kids out doing things. And oftentimes a child might be afraid. You can say, well, we could uh, go to this store and shop, or we could go to that store and shop. In other words, give them some choice. Or he's having some problems with certain clothing, you might give them some choices. You can wear that shirt or this shirt. Give them choices. Now, as a second type of specialized thinking is the mathematical mind. And we have a lot of people working for large companies like Apple. I'm on an Apple phone right now. And there's many, many people in the U.S. that work on Apple phones. You've probably heard of Google. What we call that Silicon Valley. That's a tech companies. I have visited those companies and uh, there's programmers there that do computer work that I am sure on the autism spectrum. I've done a lot of work building cattle facilities. I worked with some very talented people that did welding that uh, were probably also on the autism spectrum. You see, a brain can sort of be more social emotional or a brain can sort of be more into thinking. You know, a little bit of autism is just part of normal variation. And there's many, many people from India that are working for our large tech companies like Microsoft and Google and Apple. And uh, some of those people from India that are doing a very, very good job in computer science in some of our biggest companies, they're a little bit on the autism spectrum. But the problem is autism is very variable. And you can also have very severe autism where the child's not going to learn how to talk and he may have difficulty learning basic skills. And then you've got other people, they're the word thinker. Now, a big problem that I see when the child that's got a problem is there's not enough emphasis on teaching skills, dressing, how to eat correctly, learning how to go into a store and buy something. Another thing that they need to learn is working skills, having a job, learning those skills. Now, another big problem for me when I was a teenager was getting uh, people made fun of me at school. It was called bullying. They made fun of me. And the only places where, where other students did not make fun of me is where I had a shared interest. For me, it was horseback riding. For another student, maybe it's a uh, theater or maybe it's a music and band or maybe it's a robotics club, some other thing, but a shared interest could be something similar. Sport is a shared interest. You know, maybe it's soccer, a sport, or football. But where there's a shared interest that you can do with other children. Uh, that's where I had my friends. You know, I'm going to get friends through like to play soccer together. Or we like to build things together. Or do art together. That would be an example of, a, of shared interest. Now, what I'd like to do right now, because I can hear you, is I'd like to just um, have you ask a lot of questions. I really like questions. I think that's some of the best part of the meeting. I really like uh, doing questions. And I can see you there. And if I was actually there, I would uh, have, uh, I'd pick people out to do questions. So somebody's got to just uh, do some questions. Or they may have to come up to the front mm -hmm. so that I can hear you. But uh, here's somebody wearing a shirt, looks like it's uh, got a school a maroon uh, shirt and it's got some lettering on it. It looks like maybe a college shirt. Maybe, uh, maybe you have a question. She just went right by in front of me. I can see. So I want to get some discussion going. I know that people are kind of bashful, but discussion is where we learn some of the best stuff. Please, please, somebody. Oh, good. We've got a question. Hello, Great. good morning. Myself, Sudipto, I have a four-year-old son who has a mild autism. So I want to know when you uh, mention about non-verbal, what do you exactly mean? Because my son can say around 15, 20 words. He, he uh, can say words, he can talk now, good. 
he can uh, that's good. 15 20 words depending on the situation non uh, by science he can uh, literally explain everything but will you someone who can and he can babble he keep on babble the whole day he got different rhymes or something so else. he can he's not he's not doing doing uh, real words yet real words 15 to 20 at max uh, now, one thing you always want to do is encourage, if you know he knows a word for something like juice, for example, mm -hmm. or water, let's say some simple words like that, and you know he wants the water, ask him to use his words. Always encourage him to use the words that you know that he knows. Also, at four years old, can he dress himself? Sorry. Can he use the toilet? And with can help. he eat with uh, utensils? With help. With help. Yeah, he need, we need to make sure he learns basic skills, like how to put on his clothes, how to take a shower. Just uh, that's another other really important things to be teaching a four-year-old is basic skills, eating, dressing, taking a shower. Yeah, I've got to learn that. I, and a little kid at four years old, you need to spend a lot of time with them. Uh, you need to spend four or five hours a day with them. Uh, good Hi. morning. Hi. Uh, I am uh, a professional, and I've also got a 15-year-old who's on the spectrum. I wanted to know how you dealt with the whole teenage thing, the hormones, the relationships, all the peer pressure that was kind of going on around you. Now, is he f completely fully verbal? Yes. He talks normally. Yes, he does. Does he? He talks normally. Now, some of the best relationships for a teenager often start through shared interest. What does he like to do? Does he like computers? Does he like music? Yeah. What does he like? Computers and music, exactly. He likes music? Music and computers, both. Well, he might, maybe the thing to do is start a computer programming club, uh, get a band going, something where he, um, he's doing shared interests. Because when marriages are successful, it's usually through a, a shared interest, like two computer programmers, uh, you know, where, they, where they're, the most fun for them is to talk about computers all night. <laughs> and that's where these kids are going to get a shared interest. Is he doing well in school? Yes. Yes, that's what. He's doing well in school? Well, he might be. Um, it, it, he might be able to become a computer scientist uh, if he's good at that. But somebody's going to have to teach him program, teach him some C++ and Python, teach him some of the uh, programming languages. Right. You might want to get him some computer programming books. Thank you. Hi, Temple. It's Kevin Gersh. I don't know if you remember me, but we met a few times. I'm a good friend of Dr. Stephen Shore. How are oh, you? Oh, yeah, I do. Yes, I do remember. Yes, yes how are I you? Very nice to see okay. you again. I wish you were here with us. You're missing... Well, I wish I was there, but I, uh, right now I'm at, um, I'm at Colorado State University. Actually, I'm at home right now. Okay. But I'm at Colorado State University. We've got a, uh, some of our international students are uh, visiting our livestock um, uh, science department. And I've got to be with them tomorrow. Well, it's nice to see you again. Um, my question is, a lot of your corporations are, are, are embracing young men and women on the autism spectrum. Have you gotten some of the outcomes and some of the difficulties that corporations are dealing with when hiring some of our children? Well, it, you know, the thing that's really strange is you go out to the big tech companies like Microsoft and places like that. I know they have a an initiative to do this. You've got many, many people uh, programming computers there that are already on the autism spectrum. Good point. In fact, they have a tendency to, tendency to avoid the labels. Now, one of the things that employers need to think about is there's a kind of a universal pr problem across all the autism spectrum, and that is a really bad working memory. And, and so if there's a task that involves a number of steps, you need to give them a pilot's checklist. Let's say it's something like taking a coffee machine apart, cleaning it, and putting it back together. I would really recommend um, 
giving them a pilot's checklist, step one, step two, step three, so that they don't have to load working memory. That's going to help. And that's a very, very simple thing to do. And then you also um, have to, um, you know, as social, you know, they need to be coached on, on social things. You know, hygiene sometimes can be a problem. Well, you're going to have to just pull them aside and tell them they need to clean it up. Um, uh, there's a scene in the movie where I was told to clean it up, <laughs> and that happened. And at the time, I was very, very upset, but I thank that boss now. And his secretaries really did take me shopping. Yeah, you, get, you can't be a rude, filthy slob. I was, reading a, I was reading a book just the other day that Future Horizons put out called Awkward. It's a little tiny, small book, but it kind of has the do's and don'ts of, of how to be social. It's a real simple little book. It's called Awkward. It's a book they've just published. I actually really liked it because it's just a nice little guide. It's not a big, long book. It's just a little tiny book. But it kind of tells you if in this situation, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. You know, like talk about controversial stuff at work, for example, was one of the examples they gave in that. Thank they you very much. Thank you very much. It's nice seeing you again. Thank you. Okay, good to talk to you. Okay, good. We've got somebody else coming up. Good morning, ma'am. My name is Purba Srimani, and I'm a professional. I'm a psychologist and a special educator. Um, I really wanted to ask you one little thing. Like, uh, many children with autism uh, have certain obsessive traits, have certain obsessions. They would want to do certain things repeatedly. So one of these obsessions that I have come across is going through books like seeing pictures, uh, reading, or uh, going through the same books over and over again. Although we would want to educate this child, but then if that is an obsession, how do we actually uh, take him out of that, yet help him educate? Well, I think the best thing to do, I used to like to spin things. And what mother would do is I'd have some time where I was allowed to spin things, then other times I was not allowed to do, do that. You know, if you let him do that all day, they shut out the world. You know, that you don't want them to do. Now, lots of times, autistic kids will get fixated on their favorite subject. It might be cars, or maybe it's horses, you know, whatever, maybe it's football, whatever their favorite subject is. And what you want to do is broaden it, broaden it. So if the child likes cars, let's read the science of cars. We can read books about people who invented cars. In other words, take that interest in cars and broaden it. It because cars is a really good uh, area to go into a career. There's lots of careers you can do with cars. So you take that fixation and, and you broaden it out so that it's not so fixated. When I was a young child, when I was eight, I would just draw the same horse head over and over and over again. And my mother said, let's draw the entire horse. Draw it stable. Draw it saddled. That's an example of broadening that, that fixation. Take it and broaden it because uh, some of those things can turn into careers. Thank you, thank you so much. So we do not need to uh, work on removal of that obsession, but rather we can uh, enhance and uh, bring it much more forward, right? Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Well, you saw, and I can remember, you know, spinning, a, spinning things around, and, and you can, it's okay to have a little bit of time where I do that, but other times I, got, I, I need to be stopping doing that. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. I am the mother of five-year-old autistic boy. So he just started with his speech like uh, some five to six words for last two, three months. And how old is he now? Five years. Five, okay. Five. So uh, my question is like uh, he has started with this f uh, four or five words, but uh, he is not going beyond. Like he is uh, obsessed with these words. And even if he's trying to say uh, different words, so for one time he will say, but he always tries to repeat those five words and use only those five words in his interaction. So, so well, how to he's probably what they call echolalic. In other words, you'll say a word, and then he repeats it. There's like three ways that the brain can have problems with speech. The first is hearing is not working right, where the child does not hear auditory detail. So if I said the word cup, 
you know, like a cup you drink from. He might just hear, Ugh. he doesn't hear the C and the P. So mm -hmm. that's a problem with auditory processing. This is why it's so important to speak slowly. Then the second kind of speech problem is can't get it out. That's called expressive. Can't get the speech out. I had problems with that. The third type is where the child repeats. The language comes out nice and clearly, but they repeat it. Or they may say a big part of a movie script and they don't know what it means. So if he's repeating movie scripts or TV shows, yeah, then really what you want to do is take a piece of that movie script and work it into the real world because he's got to learn that that movie script or that TV show actually means something. So pick out some sentences from the movie that you could put in a real situation and then also start teaching them names of toys, names of foods, names of pieces of clothing, common things. So because the child that, that repeats a movie script doesn't know what it means. They'll say all these words. Thank you, thank now you. Now you've got to teach them that words have meaning. So we have another uh, 20 minutes with Dr. Grandin and we have three questions left. Next is, yeah. Okay, we, we need to keep it really short. Hello, good morning, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, my question is, uh, my student is 18 years old, but uh, she is capable to do her academic and self-help work, the, but the problem area is communication. When we are working the on the- The problem is what? I'm communication, sorry, I Communication, ma'am. Communication with us or others, the problem, she was not uh, able to communicate uh, in the right way. Suppose we are working on uh, the picture skills and uh, we are okay. trying to communicate uh, uh, with the help of laptop and others. But when we are trying to do uh, uh, these uh, things, but uh, the problem is the behavior. Uh, the behavior was going arise and uh, she she thought that we are doing a uh, much much pressure and uh, she was not communicating with us and uh, so now is 18 years and uh, her communication if we are counting through the session a two hour session uh, she was uh, only two or three times she was saying independently so in the absence okay i'm having there's some there's a little bit of an echo so she's 18 years old yes, and she's communicating with a picture board, you were saying? Yeah, we are trying with the pictures and uh, through the typing, uh, through the math. Oh, she can, can she type, like if you, can she type, for example, the name of a food that she might want? Uh, actually, ma'am, uh, uh, there is a little bit problem. Uh, she is not ready to work with us in academic section. When she do it with her mom, her mother, she is doing very nicely. But when we are trying the same thing with her, her uh, she was not responding. In other words, so no, I'm trying to figure out exactly what her problem is. So her problem is she works well with her mother, but not with teachers. Yes, ma'am. But uh, she was doing the self-help work with us, and uh, and uh, that. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. The, my question is that, ma'am, uh, what we would do uh, her pick, uh, for her uh, build her uh, strong communication area? What we will do? I'm sorry. Part of the problem is your voice is going into an echo, and I'm having trouble hearing. Dr. Grand, Maybe somebody her, else can repeat the question. Her question is, uh, what should she do to improve her communication okay. skills? Okay. okay, now I can hear you. Now the question is, what should she do about what now? For her, uh, for her better communication skills. Okay, so I'm trying to, first of all, I've got to find out what exactly the communication is now. She's communicating with a picture board, I'm trying to figure out how much typing she can actually do. I can't make a recommendation until I can clearly get a description of what she's actually doing right now. So I'm trying to figure out, is she typing on a computer words? Is she pointing to pictures? Uh, or does she have a machine that, that says words when you push a button on, on a picture? See, I don't know what See, that's the problem. I don't know. Um, I, I, I've got to understand the question. Hello. Dr. Grandin, we're just running short of time, and we have so many people to ask you questions, so we've just moved to the next person. Hello, this is Officer Islam from Bangladesh. I have no any question, but I would like to have... 
I'd like to have a significant message for our parents so that they can move forward positively with their children with autism. Just a, well, a small thing, message the, for the our the parents. The thing you got to do, you have to keep working on, on what the child can yeah. do. I really like what Stephen Hawking, you know, Stephen Hawking, the famous scientist, said about disability. Concentrate on the things your disability doesn't prevent you from doing well. Now, it's really important that people have a way to communicate. It could be simple uh, pictures. Some individuals can learn to type on a computer. Just uh, type like on a word programming, a word program, you know, Microsoft Word or, or a text messaging program. Just type out their, um, their responses. Um, but having a way to communicate is really important because there's a lot of uh, crying that happens because of frustration of not being able to communicate. Thank you so much, Dr. Grandin. The next Thank question you. is from Meena. Hello, good morning, Dr. Grandin. Um, I'd be presenting next on uh, animal therapy and its uh, importance or uh, use for children with autism. And uh, you were known to uh, benefit yourself from your uh, uh, companionship with animals, your love for horse riding. Can you share some experience about how animals helped you in your journey? Well, uh, when I was in high school, which would be age 14, 15, 16, I was the really weird uh, teenager that everybody bullied and teased and they called me names like Bones and they called me audio recording machine because I always repeated the same phrases. We used to call that a tape recorder. Um, and the places where I had friends was with the, when we rode the horses. And so there were two things I learned from the horses. I got friends who were riding horses, and I also learned how to work. Because for three years at my school, I uh, took care of the horse barn. I cleaned the stalls, I fed the horses, I uh, let the horses in and out of the barn. I, that also taught work skills. But horses were just an example of friends who shared interests. In fact, I got a paper online of how horses helped a, helped a person with autism uh, have friends and learn how to work. You can probably find that online. Um, but the shared interest is so important. You know, it could be computers. It could be movies. It could be football. It could be robots, it could be a math club, chess club, school play, playing music, many, many different things, doing a, an art class together, lots of different kinds of things. That's where the kid that's weird, fully verbal kid, you know, can have friends. You see, this is one of the things that's difficult about autism, is you're going from somebody who ought to be a computer scientist for Microsoft to somebody uh, that can't dress themselves. And they all has the same name. Now, I think the international classification of diseases, when they come out with a new ICD-11, is going to have autism severity. Now, when I was a young child, I was very severe. But I had a lot of good early education, so I went from being very secure, severe to being uh, at the top level. I hope that answers the question. So much, Dr. Grandin. We have the next question. Well, if we don't have any other questions, I'll be probably be signing off. Hi, good morning. Um, my daughter was diagnosed with autism at three. That was last year. In the one year, she's sorry. In the one year that she's been diagnosed with therapy, her vocabulary has increased. Her tantrums have stopped. She started understanding a lot more, but she good, can't. Good. She can't uh, comprehend yet. She can't tell me what happened in school. Um, she can't answer certain questions. So we've been advised that we can mainstream her now. And my concern is in a big classroom when we mainstream her, and she's finding something difficult, and she can't understand something, or s s any type of mental pressure. How do we? Is it a good sign that she started saying so many things? Will she be ever be able to well, tell it's us? Good that, it's good that she's saying all those words. Now, the thing you want to watch when you put her in this big classroom is, is she interacting with the other children, or is she just sitting off in the corner by herself? The thing you do not want to have happen is she just sits off in the corner herself, rocking or spinning something. It's really, it's really important that she interacts with the other children. So and, she, uh, 
that's that's the thing that that she's got to do and hopefully she will interact with the other children but uh, but if she doesn't then that's a bad thing you know then she might need another teacher to come in just help her a bit to interact with the other children or maybe you could go in there and into that classroom and get her playing with the other children but then gradually i want to take you away do you, think you know, start she's... off maybe at first where you get two, two other little kids to, to do something. Or maybe she'll go in there and just work with the other children. You don't know. So she's picked up so much vocabulary. Do you think that she'll start soon understanding and she'll start soon? In one year, she's picked up so much language. Do you think that's a good sign for and she'll start comprehending more soon? Well, yeah, no, yeah, yeah again, get, I think you're getting the mic too close to your mouth and it's making an echo. I can hear you better if you hold it a little further away. Uh, but the thing that you've got to look at when you go in the classroom is, does she interact with the other children? Does she play with other children? Okay, so she does go for dance classes and so on, and she does like playing with other children, though they don't, good, good, they, they don't good. understand That's good. the way that she uh, plays with them because they're neurotypical children, they don't understand why she wants to hold their hand and why she wants to do certain things. But I think I've taken enough time. Thank you for, your, thank you for the help. Well, just get her doing things with other kids. She's still very young. Uh, when I was three, uh, we need, now can she dress herself? It's really important at this age, she, can you learn to dress herself, shower, She can take off her clothes. She still has problem putting them on. She does know in the shower to shampoo and wash her face okay, good. and brush her teeth. She does know. Now, there's a things. tendency lots of times for the mother to help the child too much. I think The mother right. will often help too much. I want her to learn how to put her clothes on. All right. Uh, that's something she no needs to learn how to do. And, and there's sometimes there's a tendency to help too much. You sometimes need to help a little bit. But I want her to learn putting clothing on independently, learning how to use the... Uh, uh, chopsticks or knife and fork, whatever you're using for eating. I want her to learn how to use that, to use the toilet properly. We've got to learn these skills. All right, ma'am, thank you. So we have the um, last five minutes. So one question and then a closing address from you, Dr. Grandin. Hi, ma'am. Uh, I have a 14-year-old uh, fragile ex uh, daughter uh, she's uh, uh, she keeps talking to herself a lot, and you know that's something uh, which uh, you know we've not been able to work around. And uh, I'm, uh, you know, you said you were very friendly with animals. She is extremely scared of uh, animals. You know, you know, birds, animals, insects. So you know, we've tried uh, all sorts of things to make her friendly with them, but uh, that hasn't worked. So all right. What does she doesn't like animals? What does she like? Well, she likes music. She likes music? Well, then I'd encourage music. Sure, now, we let's, know that. Let's, and let's, encourage, let's do different kinds of music. Let's learn how to sing together with other people. Turn it into an activity that she can enjoy doing with other people, like singing together. That would be a really good thing. Yeah, so she does train on Indian classical music, so she does pretty well in that. But uh, my concern is, you know, the, uh, rep repeatedly speaking to herself, you know, she gets Okay, the lost thing to do with the voice. talking to herself, I used to do that when I was 14. And what I was taught is I could do it in my room if I wanted to talk to myself. What I was actually doing was thinking out loud. And there's other times we don't do it. We don't do it at the market. We don't do it at the dining room table. You see, you have a time where you're allowed to talk to yourself, and other times you don't do it. So how do we put a stop to it? Like, you know, you're saying don't do it. So uh, is Well, you can have a time where she's allowed to do it. Okay. So you so we should have some that. time where sure. she's allowed to do it. Okay. Thank you. But uh, places where you don't do it in public or while you're eating or the family's eating. Okay. You don't. But there could be other times when she's by herself where she'd be allowed to do it. Okay, thank you. In other words, there's a time where it's allowed and a time where it's not allowed. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Grandin, for being here with us today. We're really, really honored to have had you, you know, even for the short amount of time. There's so many questions.
but we just we don't have the time. So well, if we can I have... think um, one of the best books for you to, you to get is my book called The Way I See It. We actually have you it You can outside. buy it on Amazon, either as print or it's also available as audiobooks. It's called The Way I See It. It has lots of little short articles that people can read. And if you want to copy some of those articles, just go ahead and do it. If you want to translate some things, just go ahead and do it. Is there any general message that you have for this audience well, here in India? Well, what you got to start figuring out is try to figure out what your child can do. Okay, if we have a child, a young child is three years old, uh, yeah, I want to get all, the, I want to learn, I want that child to learn speech, but they also have to learn things like how to eat, shower, put their clothes on, take their clothes off, and oftentimes there's a tendency to help too much. You got to help them a little bit, but I want them to learn how to do it themselves. So I think maybe we'll just end there. And I have lots of videos you can also find on YouTube and places online. Feel free to download those. If you want to copy them, translate them, just go right ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. You are very welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. OK, I'm going to say goodbye now. And I hope I've helped you out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Okay. Grandin. Thanks. Okay.